let's take just a minute to talk about the new Google Earth application for the iPad. Until mid-June, Google Earth was only available for the iPhone. You could load it up onto your iPad and use the Pixel Doubler, but anyone that's actually used the Pixel Doubler realizes it's pretty much worthless, especially when you're dealing with a graphics-intensive program like Google Earth. It just doesn't look the part. We do have Google and Apple working together on this, and so obviously it's going to be a quality product, and overall the experience is great. But there are a couple things I'd like to see tweaked about it. So let's go ahead and open it up. It obviously looks great on the HD screen. Let it go ahead and open up and zoom in to our previous location, which appears to be Chad. And the first thing I'll show you is the ability to open up the Panoramia pictures from within the same window. It doesn't open a, a new window like it did before, like it did on, on the iPad and take up the entire screen. And you can just click off that. Also, the gestures when you're on the tilted mode work pretty well. It's actually really responsive. I'm dealing with an extremely slow connection, too. It does have all your layers available. This is similar, actually, with the exception of the Rhodes layer, which was added, everything was previously available for the iPhone. I'll go ahead and add one of my maps, though, just to show you how that loads up on the application. You can see all the layers still remain available. This happens to be some data I collected on uh, costs of flights between Detroit, Michigan, and some African capitals. So, Google Earth itself responds pretty well. You know, it spins as you can expect. You know, there are some apps out there for the iPad that cost a couple bucks and this is all they do and they don't have the same imagery and the uh, ability to zoom in. One thing I'll zoom in real close to show you is the auto tilt feature. Just like it was available before for the iPhone. It is a little bit jerky, as you can see here, it's jerky, but it does work. One thing I'm hoping they're going to add, at least for the iOS 4, which won't really affect the iPad, more the iPhone 4, is that 6-axis control so you can go side to side. I think that would be a great addition and it would really make it possible to, you know, it'd be a more immersive experience. One thing that I don't understand is why they don't bundle up all the things that they have in this Google Google Earth application into the, just the Maps application, because really it's about the same thing. The Maps application on the iPad and the iP uh, or excuse me, just the iPad, is almost the exact same as Google Earth. It just doesn't have all the same layers, and you can't load on your own Maps, and you can't zoom out to Earth. But I mean, they could just add something that says your own Maps right there, and add your layers, and they wouldn't even need a Google Earth application. So I really don't understand the need for it. The other thing I'd like to see added is the ability to create your own tours and record them on the iPad. Because like I said, the gesturing works so well and that auto, auto tilt functionality, you could come up with some amazing tours that you can't do with a mouse. You just simply can't do it. But uh, the touch screen on the iPad allows you to, would allow you to do it and make some great tours. So I hope to see some of those changes. Otherwise, it's a fantastic app. It's free, so you have no reason not to get it. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think.